Oh, there I got it. Call this meeting to order. Whereas there's a quorum of council president in time at 6 p.m., be it resolved this regular meeting, be for business via Zoom, and that the minutes of the regular meeting of February 23rd, 2022 be approved. Can I have a mover and a seconder? I'll move that, Les. Dale will move it there, seconder. Pat will I'll second. Pat, Pat will second it there. Kevin, yes. for against? I'm in favor. Edith? Favor. Pat? Pat in favor. Brenda? In favor. Cheryl? She's out, not on yet there. Dale? No, I'm in favor. Motion carry. In regards to the consent agenda there, anybody got any concerns there in regards to the checks there? Hearing none, be it resolved that items A1 contained in the consent agenda be adopted. Can I have a mover and a seconder? I will move. Kevin. Kevin, I'll move it there. Pat, I'll second it. Yes. Okay, Kevin, you're for or against? I'm for. Edith? In favor. Pat? In favor. Glenda? In favor. Uh, Cheryl's not yet. Dale? I'm in favor. Motion carried. Kim, do you want to uh, start the, the request uh, for donation there, please? You're on mute, Kim. Sorry, Edie, I have Edie Fairburn coming into the meeting. Is that a different That's device? my answer, so I, um, I'm not sure. I just finally all kind of caught up, I guess. Okay. Okay, so I have circulated to council a request for a donation um, from Rosalind Russell, who is taking part in a, uh, <clears throat> um, a charity for a Miss Regional Canada pageant um, event. And the official charity is the Northern Ontario Families of Children with Cancer. And she is uh, requesting uh, donations uh, as part of her fundraising um, you know, efforts for this. Does Edie have a twin? I'm confused. <laughs> there. There we go. <clears throat> so I would, I would move that we donate $500. I'll second that. Is everybody in agreement? Is everybody in agreement before we put a uh, number in there? Hearing no comment there. Okay, 500. Okay. Raz Roslin uh, Russell is a delegate representing Lacoste Boat Hills in the 2022 uh, MS Regional uh, Canada competition. Res the official charity for the competition is the Northern Ontario Families of Children with Cancer. We resolve the donation in the amount of $500 be approved to the Northern Ontario Families of Children with Cancer as part of the MS Russell funding efforts. <coughs> and that Russell, uh, Rosalind Russell be uh, commended for participating in this competition where the focus is empowering women to contribute their, to their communities and to help other women through life challenges using their own uh, talents. Can I have a mover and a seconder? Pat will move. Pat will Glenda move. Will second. Glenda. Glenda will second. Kevin, you're for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? In favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? Dale? I'm in favor. Motion carried. Kim, when you send that to could you send a thank you as well there with the letter there? I the check? I, yes, for sure. Thanks. Is Jock on the air or uh, do you want to um, comment on this? I can't, I can't get his voice. I'm not sure. Um, I can't unmute him. Jacques, can you hear us? Just nod if you can. No, I guess not. I, 
I can get him on the phone and he can just, you can listen, he can hear. Well, no, if, if everybody read the information, it doesn't make, it uh, doesn't matter. Did everybody yeah. look at the, the quotes? Yeah, it's pretty obvious what the best quote is here. <clears throat> but one of the troubles is when they bid on this, diesel was only a dollar, what, 40 or maybe 50 there. Now it's over $2. So <clears throat> I don't know what's going to happen there in regards to this uh, tender. Yeah, I, I'm sure we'll see the price of diesel double like everything else. Well, diesel's more expensive than gasoline again, no? Well, now it is. Yeah, it's over two bucks. So, I mean, so are they going to honor their tender? If how does that work? Well, that's well, all in the paperwork. I'm pretty sure. No, there was, I don't know. There, was, I, there, was, there was no statement made in in any of the submissions as to any uh, concerns with fuel prices and uh, those are the quotes that have been received. I would like to make motion then that we involve the first two contractors on the list. We have one at the east and one at the west. Their prices are identical on the granular A and there's a slight mm -hmm. in the modified B and riprap but it's it's a back and forth and I think uh, Les had the idea a few years ago to keep two um, people in communication with us and to save a little bit of fuel in the environment so Think that's what the, we the only issue with that is I would be concerned that these contractors giving us those prices based on that that amount, that amount of gravel. So if we split up that amount of gravel between the two, that's not uh, what they bid on. Yeah. Okay. We we ended up with that problem before. Okay. Um, Kim, did you send? Was the quote sent out for all three uh, grades that they've listed? Yes. Okay. They have uh, this, the summary sheet that council has yep. includes all three. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I see it now, yeah. Well, <clears throat> the Stoftenberg uh, tender looks all around the best, uh, the best deal for us. If we can't split this up, then that's the way to go. Are you making a motion, Kevin? Yeah, I guess I am that we, I so, move that we, uh, So most of our gravel is supply haul and spread. Yeah, right. right. So- And so um, the Samptonburg bid is head and shoulders above. Well, the Samptonburg bid is the same as Carlisle with regards to the supply haul and spread, 1987. Uh, the modified B, which they bid on, it's only 500 to 800 cubic yards. Uh, Carlisle bid 2297 and Samptonburg bid 2403. And the rip wrap is only 50 to 150 cubic yards. And Carlisle was 2750 and Morris Samptonburg was 2680. Um, the granular A they bid on for eight to 10,000 cubic yards. So that is the, that's the major one. The next one, like I said, is the, is the modified granular B. Well, maybe we should let Carlisle Construction have that one, seeing as it's a little over a dollar cheaper. We can't split this. Oh, okay. This tender was put out so that oh. one one contractor. Okay. Well, isn't Samptonburg from our township? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Carlisle Construction has well, some. They have property too, yeah. They're, yeah, they're right here, here too. Oh, okay, I wasn't aware of that, so. Overall, Samptonburg's the cheapest, is that? Not correct. Well, it's for the correct. modified B. Yeah. Yeah. The modified B is a little higher, but the rest, they're. Yeah, and it's all in ballpark range. It's all very close together. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're looking at the same chart, but to me, even just the supply ones, Carlisle has the cheaper rates. And the you supply hall and supply hall and spread, modified B is cheaper for Carlisle. Yeah. Yeah, but the yeah. others are. It's Sansenberg's cheaper. The rip wrap is cheaper for Sansenberg. Yeah. The and, determining uh, factor a lot for me. But you have to take into consideration. Well. You have to take into consideration the rip wrap is only 50 to 100 cubic yards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. What were you saying, Glenda, about quality? 
the history of quality in the products. That's that's where I am because I've been on council yeah. for a long time. So for me, it's uh, both have been in the position to supply. So what I base my, my when they're that close, what I base my decision on is the quality of the product and how it stands up. And that's, that's what I base my decision on. I've been able to uh, unmute Jacques Mayu. Maybe he has a comment on this. I know that he uh, he looked at them and I think he indicated he'd be satisfied with either one. Jacques can comment on the rest of this. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. perfect. Can hear you now. I, I'm, I'm in on the meeting now. Um, yeah. Either way, um, these prices are very comparable. I'm just wondering now with the price of fuel and everything, is there a possibility of this being split in two and Carlisle <laughs> getting whatever I need yeah. on the east end and more Sandsburg on the west end? We well, talked about that, What I had we indicated, Jacques, was that they bid on this based on the eight to 10,000. So yeah. is that, would their bid have changed if they knew it was gonna be for a lesser quantity? Would we not have to repost it then if we change the parameters? Kim, did we not have this situation before where we ended up splitting it up? With, from what I recall, we ended up doing that at yes, one point I believe in time. That, I believe that the granular quantity required was increased for projects, so we yeah. were able to do that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, guaranteed, if we repost this, we're not going to get these prices. Yeah. So, yep. So let's is there, one is and there, live with it. Yeah. Is, is it... Is it possible if both contractors are so close in bids, if they agreed on it, half and half, would that work? Well, they bid on the quantity, like Kim says, so I think our hands are tight on that, actually. But It's something to consider in the future when we're putting it out there, I guess. Well, I think good communication is uh, necessary right now, especially with the fuel prices and stuff. So it might be in our best interest to to uh, reach out to them to see uh, if they're uh, willing to do that. If they're not, then we will decide on the tender. Like, uh, uh, you know, at this point in time, our, our fuel is only going to go up. Our gravel quality is going to remain the same. And uh, we want to keep everybody employed. So I think... You know, we have to keep open communication with our, our people that are supplying the product. So why not just give it to the person there as the lowest there and let the two contractors work it out between the two of them there, which they will. Yeah. I'll second Kevin's motion. Now, what was Kevin's motion? I'm lost. That yeah. it be granted to more. That it be granted to more Saftenberg construction. Yeah. And is the A cheapest uh, at the more Saftenberg? Same price. It's a tie. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, what is council's rationale for providing it to Saftenberg then over Carlisle for the rest of the bids? Yeah, Carlisle is cheaper. That's how I was. Mm -hmm. So the modified B is cheaper. And how much modified B are we going to use? Not very much. Yeah. Okay. So 500, 800, 800, 800 yards. Yards. Yeah. yeah. So to me, that that doesn't, uh, it, it's not an amount to make a difference as far as I'm concerned. They're both equally. Uh, yeah. It, They're in both part. So, yeah. so how do we choose, you know? Well. I, I would uh, second Kevin's motion, or Dale already did, so. Okay. Okay. You mentioned quality, Glenda. I don't have a history of that, so I don't know. Well, I'm just looking at, I, I'm both both have supplied the township, and both, both have, um, you know, have a history with the township as far as quality. So that's, that's what I'm looking at. Um, and uh, also... You know, there's other things that I'm looking at is, uh, you know, um, areas within the township that need to be done with all our projects and stuff like that. You know, um, yeah. it, it boils right down to fuel, staffing, all that kind of stuff. You know, do yeah. we, we, and we, Carlisle has had, uh, yeah. Car Carlisle has had a good piece of the pie taken care of Webwood for us as well. So, yeah, uh, Carlisle's, like granular, Carlisle's granular A is cheaper 
and his hauling for the granular A is cheaper. Not what I see. Not what I see. The hauling, the, hauling. Is, the hauling is the same price for granular A for both of those contractors. Yes. Yeah. And that's the bulk the, of If we needed additional and we were to go pick it up, the supply is cheaper from Carlisle for all three material. By seven cents. Yeah, but we have to go farther to pick it up. So what's yeah. the difference, yeah. you know? Okay, okay, there was a mover in a second. We had resolved that uh, RFQ for the supply of granular materials for 2022 be awarded to uh, Morris Sansenberg. And it's moved by Kevin and second by uh, Dale. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Kevin, you're for or against? A recorded, recorded vote, please. Uh, do, 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 do. Pat, for or against? Against. Against. Kevin? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? In favor. And it's recorded vote. I can vote as well there. I'm against there. Motion carried. So I know I'll be ha I have to follow up with all the contractors on this tomorrow and I'll have to provide them with council's um, consideration and rationale for their decisions made. Yes. Okay, in regards to the engineering of our bridges there, uh, Crescent Engineer, anybody got any kind of problems or concerns accepting that bid? No. He's a lot lower than uh, no, Telic. <coughs> Yeah, significantly lower. Yes. Okay, be it resolved that the proposal from uh, Crescent Engineering be accepted for the 22 uh, bridge and culvert inspection at a bid price of $8,950 plus HST. Can I have a mover and a seconder? Glenda will move, move it. Glenda will move it there, seconder? Pat will second. Pat will second it. Kevin, for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? In favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? In favor. Motion carry. Good, that was a savings of what? $3,000, $2,000, dollars Good. Yes. In regards to excavator repairs there, Jock, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, the excavator was out brushing this winter and the uh, operator noticed a different sound and vibration in it. So we shut it down. We couldn't find anything. So we called uh, <laughs> Strong, the Volvo dealer, to check it out. And he discovered that one pump is finished in it. So we've got a quote here to change that pump, which in my opinion is very premature for that machine for a pump to go. It's only got a little over 3,000 hours on it. I agree. Anyhow, um, the quote is near fifteen thousand dollars. That's at their shop. That's at their shop. Yeah, either that or they uh, charge us to travel and uh, repair it on site. So, what's our cost to get it there? The machine still moves, does it not, Jacques? Well, we we can load it onto a float and get it there. You're probably yeah. looking at another twelve hundred bucks to get it down there and back. So. Okay. Um, How much would it cost for them to come and fix it here? Just well, to, can they do it in a day? Jacques, do you think they could do it in a day? Yeah, if they bring the proper stuff with them, it's probably gonna be somewhere in the same neighborhood of price. I'm just looking at um, half loading coming up and if the machine's out on the road already, we don't have an issue of floating our own machine over half load roads. It can go back to work once it's repaired and the snow's dropped. It's not a simple fix, just the, did it strip the shaft there on the main gear or do you know? It's the, it's the pump itself. They found grindings in the filters. So it's, it's, one, it's one pump. So they got to pull that pump and replace it. 
Well, it's got to be fixed there. Yeah. I'm just considering having them do it on site because then it's it's there and we don't have to try and float our machine across the half load road after. I Once agree with that, Zach, because you would, you'd have manpower that you'd have to tie up and all that kind of thing. So I yep. think on site would be better. And you're right. It'll probably cost about the same, but if we don't have to yeah. move the machine, all the better. So Jacques, you're recommending we get it floated to Sudbury is what you're saying? No. no. I'm re recommending fixing it on site. Okay, I just worry about any specialty tools that they have to run back to Sudbury for. So <laughs> well, should, that's the well, thing. 12 hours repair time, so I figure that's going to be two trips down for them. And again, just hopefully uh, hopefully they're willing to do that. Well, if they know their job, they should have all the tools that they need to do it properly. Well, and if it's two days, then you'll have to get what he needs the next day. That's all. Yeah. I, I can see it turning into two days, 12 yeah. hours. You know, that's that includes travel time. Don't forget. So that's two days there. Yeah. What okay. I could do, what I could do is try and, and get a, a a quote from them to fix it on site compared to us taking it down there, like a, a written quote. If they yeah. screw up and they're going to come back three times, it's on them. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. next time, maybe next time we should go with two quotes and one for repairing it here and one for repairing it there, and then we'll it'll be all over and done with at our meeting. Hopefully that won't be for a long time. <laughs> I'm surprised it's now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't know it's stuff like that. Sometimes it lasts, sometimes it doesn't. Like there's uh maintenance records for that machine, Jacques. Yep. Okay. How okay. old oil that's in there? Pardon me? How old's the hydraulic oil that's in that unit? I would have to look, Dale, to find out for sure. Okay, resolution is be resolved that excavator repairs as per the quotation at dated February the 15th, 2022 from Strong will be approved. The mover and a seconder. Pat moves. Pat will move it there. Seconder. I'll second. Kevin yeah. will second it there. Kevin, you for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? Favor. Pat? In favor. Linda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? In favor. Motion carried. So can we just leave this up to Jacques' discretion uh, when he gets yeah. the two quotes for uh, how much it would cost to float and how much it would cost for the people to come here and do it? We can leave it up to his discretion to take care of this and make the proper decision so that we don't have to bring it back to council again for more uh, passing. Right. I agree. That makes sense. I don't think it'll be several thousand dollars more. And I mean, whatever, if it, if it is, Jacques can always come back to us if he wants. Like, yeah. And it, Jacques, yeah. keep in the loop on that, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. In regards to uh, the pits or uh, bend in aggregate uh, pits, or, uh, Kim, do you want to fill us in there? Well, this was a continuation and an update from the last council meeting when council discussed this. We've done uh, further inquiries and I've called um, and basically the additional information I put into this staff report for you um, saying that data will collection will be by the, a drone. It'll take place and then a design of a rehabilitation plan will, all, will be um, drafted. This could include grading, stabilization and seeding of the slope to make it safer. Only on-site material would be used. There would be some test pitting done to see if there's any topsoil that can be used. They would create a hydro seed uh, matrix using a hardy seed mixture and generate a soil profile. They will create a work plan with the owner, which is the township. Uh, I made them aware that we use this pit for winter snow removal purposes. So having access maintained would be included in this work plan, they indicated. The rehabilitation supervisor for the area for our area will work directly with us in full cooperation and they now have our contacts so that they can follow up and, and uh, uh, be in contact with us uh, all through this process. 
So basically the signing of the landowner acknowledgement and release form just confirms our interest in participating and allows them to access the property and draft a rehab plan. Full disclosure will be made to the township as, the, as to the level and the type of the rehabilitation they're gonna propose. They will then reach out to us for further agreement uh, at that time. Uh, so basically until equipment is on site, council can withdraw at any time if they so wish. And after rehabilitation is completed, there's a one year warranty to ensure that it succeeds. Um, if an issue arises, the site will be fixed by the contractor at no cost to the township. After the one year warranty period is finished, then there's no obligation to this program any longer. Kevin, you see where the money's coming from? Did you read? Yeah. Anybody got any other concerns? No. Nope. Going to make our township safer. I think it's a green light. Yeah. Okay. Be it resolved, we express our interest in the property rehabilitation program for Legacy Pit located in Salter Township, Section 25, as pro provided by the Ontario Aggregate Resources Corporation through the management of Abandoned Aggregate Properties Program, file number SUD SA 347. Can I have a mover and a seconder? I'll make that motion, Les. Kevin, you'll, uh, or Dale, you'll move yep. it there, seconder? I'll second. Kevin, you for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat in favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? She's muted. Uh, no. Dale? I'm in favor. Motion carried. In Cheryl. regards to that, Cheryl is mute. Oh, there. Okay. <laughs> just, just a reminder with this new process. Once you mute yourselves, I have to unmute you if I notice that you're. Ruth, on uh, Ruth is muted. Yeah, I see. I her. don't know how it got muted. I didn't even touch it. So okay, <laughs> whatever. <clears throat> okay, waste management. There, uh, Kim. You want to fill us in there? Um, well, I've given council a fairly lengthy uh, staff report as a summary to the RFP that was sent out for waste management services. Uh, in addition to my report, I've given you a copy of the report that Joel Yusko, Public Works um, Supervisor from Espanola, has uh, created as well. And his goes more into the analysis of the whole waste management program through the province and the blue box transitioning and so on. Uh, my report basically more focused on our township uh, information, township costs and so on. So basically um, GFL Enterprises uh, Environmental was the only contractor out of several, um, four that had been personally invited and then the rest, um, the Ontario Municipal Waste Association held our RFP on their uh, site, just like the Sudbury or the Sault Ste. Marie Construction Associations would for construction projects. Uh, and GFL was the only one, and um, Mr. Yusko had gone into detail as to uh, why, mostly because uh, a lot of these companies don't have the full uh, facility uh, like GFL does to provide this service at a reasonable cost. Um, so to summarize, GFL provided a quote for us for all of our services uh, that we're providing, getting now. Uh, the initial cost of $243,500, and that's less than $7,000 uh, of the current non-contracted cost, which I have outlined for Council's uh, information near the top of the report. Um, this is a, a seven-year contract. There is uh, an adjustment annually on the anniversary date. The increase will be equal to 75% of the CPI increase. So I've given an example, if the CPI increases by 2% over the 12 month period, then the fees paid to the contractor will increase by 1.5% for that next calendar year. There's also a section in with regards to annual fuel consumption, they have given an estimate. And because this was a joint tender with the Lacloche Foothills municipalities, they've given a total. Um, we have asked them for a breakdown just so for budget purposes, each municipality will know how much uh, the initial fuel costs will be. And like you have already indicated with the current high increase or big jump in, in fuel costs, we are gonna see a difference in this. 
but what they've done in the contract is, is um, provide for fuel adjustments for anything 10% above or below what they have uh, indicated, indicated on their tender in January. And that was $1.46 a litre. And obviously we're, we're uh, higher than that already right now. Uh, the only thing that, um, that is a little bit higher than what our current is, and that's our bin lifts. And that's at our, all of our municipal sites uh, waste transfer sites, as well as our municipal properties where we have bins at the public works arena clinic and so on. Those uh, costs averaged about $40 and right and the new price is $138. And so we're also getting confirmation on a couple things on that. But um, I have indicated that a cost saving measure for bin lifts could be to have department heads gauged their waste disposal quantities and perhaps it'd be possible to decrease the bin lifts each month. Um, because we have that right now and it's just there and GFL have always just been on the same schedule for that. But if the township was more uh, diligent or involved in, in how much waste they're producing and when that needs to be emptied, that could probably be, uh, that could probably alter that, that cost. Uh, but you're also driving. Sorry, go, go ahead. But they're also driving all over the country to pick these bins that's, up, so that's why the cost is up. Yeah. yeah, that's what they indicated. They indicated that they had to take do an average because this was a joint tender, and the big reason was because of the um, number of kilometers of roads. And obviously, our municipality is uh, the leader in that for sure. Um, comments in the Espanola report regarding the blue box transition carry through to us as well. Once our municipality transitions to full producer responsibility on June 1st, 2023, which council determined in 2020, then the residential portion of blue box services will be eliminated from the contract. So there'll be a cost reduction at that time. However, council will have to decide if we wish to pay for the continuation of this service to small businesses and schools like they're getting now. Um, because it only it only will pertain to residential blue box. So once Any more idea? once more information comes from the province as this moves forward, then council will have more information to uh, gauge future decisions on. So, so we our have no um, idea what that increase will be. No, no, we don't. Okay. Um, okay. So we know with GFL, they are planning on keeping the uh, existing schedule, pickup schedule for Thursdays. So this would, will be a very seamless transition with our residents and businesses. Um, we had not supplied residences with um, waste recycling schedule magnets for 2022, which we have <laughs> been requesting, requested many times for. Yeah. Uh, these would have to be, or these would have had to have been ordered in the fall of 21 for 22, but because we were in the middle of the RFP process, it just didn't make sense to order them and not know if they were going to be in effect for the whole year. So it is our suggestion that a, a schedule identical to the magnet be made and circulated uh, by Canada Post flyer mail with information that we've accepted a new contract. Uh, these paper copies can be available at the office. They can be downloaded from our website. We can have them emailed, we can put them in the mailboxes and people will have their schedule for this year on a piece of paper and they can stick it on the fridge with a magnet. In 2023, we can be right back on board with the regular magnets that uh, everybody has become accustomed to. Kim, when you, when you send that out, are you gonna put the price there, what it's costing there for waste management there on as well? I, I could put the price, but um, it's 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 the initial year's price, right? And I could yes. put maybe some detail as to how the increases are going to be uh, shown. But uh, sure, we can give them some some idea for sure. Well, the rate payer should know what it's I costing think, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think and I think a, that yeah. uh, all the other, actually, I think Baldwin and Espinola, I know for sure, have already accepted this. And um, Naren hasn't had their meeting yet. I like I like this contract. I mean, we're going to take a bath on fuel costs, but that's going to happen no matter what. So, yeah, um, looks like a good contract to me. You see how Espanola has separate trucks for the garbage and the recyclables. Mm hmm. Just wonder why they don't do it here. I guess because we're spread out so far. We're right? we're, we're exactly. spread out. That's what it is. 
Okay, resolution reads, be it resolved that the proposal from GFL Environmental Incorporation be accepted for the waste management services for a seven uh, year contract uh, commencing April 30th, 2022. A mover and a seconder? I'll move it. I'll Linda. move it. will move it there, seconder? I'll second. Cheryl. Cheryl will second it there. Kevin, you for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat's in favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? In favor. Motion carried. Carry on, uh, Kim, with the economic development there, officer. Okay. Uh, in 2019, Council agreed to pursue a potential internship program for a Regional Economic Development Officer with the Laclache Foothills Municipal Association members. Uh, due to various factors, this has been stalled until just this past year. Um, one was the um, uh, departure of one of the um, main members of this and then Lambach kind of changed their, their way of doing business and so it kind of stalled this. Um, but together, the four municipalities uh, have worked on an ap application for a shared uh, officer with the town of Espanola doing the submission on our behalf. We're now at phase two of the process and nearing completion. Fednor has asked that each municipality include council support for the application, uh, even though we had given uh, approval in principle at the very onset of it. Now we're at the final stages of the, of the uh, application process. And I had given council just a small excerpt of the application um, showing what the description of the project would be. Mm -hmm. So the project um, provides for funding for up to three years and 90% of $100,000 per year for salary benefits and travel costs. The municipalities would be responsible for the remaining 10%. The application is detailing project costs that will see our share at less than $7,500 for the three year term. Um, now that that's for the, um, wages, benefits, and, and travel, okay? So it's less than $7,500 for the three years for that. Uh, we had a further meeting with Fednor and Lambach just this week since I had uh, done this report to council. And they had also suggested that um, there will be project costs. Like we, once, once this officer comes into place, they're going to need some funds in order to execute certain projects or to do certain uh, works as a joint um, effort. Uh, there's going to be a lot that won't take work. There's uh, a lot of the website work, um, uh, some, some stuff that deals online. That's not going to be uh, needing money for really up front. But because we don't know what kind of projects over the next three years this individual could work on for all of our municipalities, um, the resolution that is a recommendation on your staff report remains the same, but I had uh, included it with the mayor's package to include uh, that we will commit to an annual project budget for this year, three year program as determined during each annual budget review by council. So that doesn't commit you to an amount, but it commits mm -hmm. you to saying, yes, we will look and see what what they're proposing to do this, that next year and what costs may, may be required from each council. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Because if you're, mar you're marketing the Clause Foothills is gonna be a cost there and we're yeah. all in agreement there. Okay, resolution reads, be it resolved that council supports the grant application uh, through the Federal Economic Development Agency for the Northern Ontario uh, FedNor for a shared economic development officer for the town of Espinol, the township of Nairn and Hindman, and the township of Baldwin, and that we will commit to an annual project budget for this three-year program as determined during each annual budget review by council. Can I have a mover and a seconder? I'd like to make that motion. Kevin, you'll move it there. Seconder? Edil second. Edil second it there. Kevin, you for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat's in favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? In favor. Motion carried.
in regards to the bylaws there, Kim, here, you want to do a short summary there? Please? Sure, I'll do, I'll do a summary on the first one and then I'll ask Ruth just to uh, fill in council on the second bylaw. Uh, at the February 23rd council meeting, discussion took place with respect to the succession process used for the clerk administrator position. At that time, Councillor Rivers requested that a motion be prepared to state council's commitment to publicly advertising vacant positions within the municipal organization to allow, allow external applications to be received. I have given council a copy of our existing hiring policy, and I've also provided you with a draft bylaw to amend section 5.3 to provide for this option, still leaving final decision with council on a site-specific basis. Uh, depending on the position that is vacant, council may deem it appropriate to give it to our experienced staff, the opportunity um, for promotions and lateral moves within the municipal organization before inviting members of the public to apply. It, like I said, it's all site specific. It would all depend on what position it, uh, it, it was providing. This pro process for doing that has been applied in all departments of our municipal organization at one time or another. Um, including the office, public works, clinic, arena, fire, and the commitment and loyalty of the employees have elevated because of council believing in their abilities and providing them with that opportunity. So we have kept that in there, but we have included the external posting as well for council's uh, consideration. I wish the external posting read before the uh depending on the position uh, that is vacant. Just so that we are posting everything and perhaps our internal people will be the best choice uh, that we can make, but I'd still like the members of the public to see that, uh, that we're open about this. Well, it says that um, internal postings, council may give priority to any qualified existing employee. Should more than one employee be interested in the position, the hiring team shall conduct interviews and select the most suitable candidate. And then it says two for external postings, should there be no qualified existing employee or if council deems it more appropriate to post externally, the position will be publicly advertised in appropriate publications. So that totally gives council the to go ahead to make that decision. That's fine with me. Yeah, that's okay. fine. It's all there. That's stating it depending on the position that, yeah. So I, th I think that's fine. Of yeah. course. It's always going to be at our discretion. So, yeah. And I'll ask Ruth to uh, give council some information on G2 of the agenda. So this has brought forward because in 2018, the Municipal Act under the Section 378, which uh, gave uh, municipalities the authority to enter by bylaw an extension, tax arrears extension agreement. Um, so they changed the wording of that to just say a municipality may. So that gives you the opportunity to delegate the authority to the treasurer or someone else in the municipality to enter, to negotiate and execute these agreements. I'm recommending this just due to the fact that for timing, administrative, sometimes these issues are time, time sensitive. So that's all it's, the bylaw would just say, I, I could go ahead and negotiate and execute the agreements without passing a bylaw, without council having to pass the bylaw. Has anybody got any concerns with that? No. No. Nope. I don't no, think I, I don't fully think. understand it, Les, sorry. Sure. What's your, what, what don't you understand, Dale? I don't think I quite understand what you said. If you don't mind, if you could just give me a brief on it. Sure. So what happens oh, okay. is when someone's in uh, tax arrears, Oh, okay. Yeah. So what this is, we're entering into an agreement for them to, to pay off because they're near tax sale proceeding, which means their property is going to be advertised for tax sale. So if they can't come up with all the money, we give them this option. So they're entering in an agreement and they're going to make agree to make a monthly payment of so much for a certain time frame. So this always had to be passed by bylaw 
to enter into these agreements. So now it's just saying that it won't have to come to council and I could go ahead and negotiate and execute the agreement. I think this is a way better idea and that it's, oh, it's a, lot, yeah. a lot more private. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. It also gives a person a chance, you know, everybody struggles or not everybody, but there are things in life that cause financial hardships. And this just gives a person another way of uh, continuing to have the ownership. I agree with Pat. It's it's more private and it's, you know, it doesn't cause any uh, undue distress to anyone, you know. Right. Yeah, because all the other times it had to come before council and we kind of knew who was involved. Yeah. You, know, you know, this way Ruth takes care of it or whoever is replacing Ruth. Yeah. And, and like I say, it's way more private and we don't need to know the, the uh, particular. Yeah, and it, since it's time sensitive, it's doesn't have to wait to go through the council. Exactly, yeah, good the, idea. The treasurer can make a deal with them because it's in our benefit for them to pay their taxes, not for us to. Right. And, uh, I also order. think the person should be, or the whoever it is, should be aware that this this is, the, this is what's going to happen and it's not being brought to council, you know, to make sure that that, so they know that, that this is an agreement between them and not uh, everybody doesn't know all about it. So that's important. Okay. Be it resolved the following bylaws be read a first second time bylaw 2022-13 being a bylaw to amend the hiring policy. Bylaw 2022-14 being a bylaw to delegate authority to the treasurer for tax arrears extension agreements. Can I have a mover and a seconder? That will move. Pat will move it there. Edie will second. Edie will second it there. Discussion Kevin. for a minute less, please. Yes. Are we doing 2022-13 as well at right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay, Kevin, for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat in favor. Linda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? Against. Motion carried. Okay, be it, be it resolved that the following bylaws be read a third and final time past an open council. Bylaw 2022-13 being a bylaw to amend the hiring policy. Bylaw 2022-14 being a bylaw to delegate authority to the treasurer for tax arrears extension agreements. A mover and a seconder. Pat will move. Pat will move it there. Seconder. Cheryl. Cheryl seconded. Kevin, you for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat's in favor. Linda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? Against. Motion carried. Kim, you got anything else before we go into closed session there? No, I don't. Anybody else got anything before we go into closed session? Can we do this after closed session? I got a few things I want to bring up. Yeah, we got time after. Okay, thank you. Well, the only catch there is we go into closed session, we're gonna lose people. Well, I'm gonna be putting I'm gonna be putting members of the audience in the waiting room. And then when uh, the closed session resumes to the open session of the meeting, then I will take them and put them back into the, uh, into the meeting, body of the meeting. Okay. Okay, we resolved to move into closed session mm -hmm. at uh, 6.50 p.m. pursuant to section 239-2 of the Municipal Act to consider personal matters about identical individuals including municipal and local board employees regarding municipal employees. A mover and a seconder. Glenda will move. Glenda will move it there. Seconder. Oh, yeah. Kevin. Second. Kevin will second. Yeah. Kevin for or against? I'm in favor. Edith. In favor. Pat. In favor. Glenda. In favor. Cheryl. In favor. Dale. In favor. Motion carried. 
and no. Okay, we resolve this closed session be adjourned at uh, 7.56 p.m. and that the regular meeting be resumed. Can I have a mover and a seconder? I'll move, Cheryl. Cheryl, move it there, seconder. Paddle second. Paddle second it. Kevin, for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? In favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? In favor. There's one person okay. included there, folks. What? There's one person in our from our way. Trying to connect there. Well, that's okay. They they're just they there. They can act whenever they want. Well, okay, but they're not muted. Yes, they are. Okay, very good. And we're in open okay. session. Okay. In regards to the closed session, it was for information only there tonight, Jerry. Yes. Yeah, yes. Kim, you got anything else for tonight there before we adjourn? No, I don't. Anybody else? Uh, you. Just uh, many words of compliments to our public works crew on how they're handling the adverse road yes. conditions this winter. Nice to hear some positive feedback from people. Amen. Yeah. 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 Uh, another little thing, uh, and and... This might be a little premature, but uh, the library has borrowed our radon meter. Yeah. And the results are not good. So, okay. But that's ongoing. We've got to move it around the building a bit. And so we'll see how that goes. Oh, you live beside the mountain that lives beside well, the Well, exactly. And we're <laughs> busy worrying about the clinic and everybody on that side. And I thought, good Lord, the library is right there. And so yeah, same rock. Serena, All Serena went and picked it up and right in the office, bang, 250 yeah. and 150 is the limit. So the, po we'll the, see post, how office, it goes, the post yeah. office could also be involved. Well, it I'm is, sure. Yeah, I'm they've sure. been tested. They have? Yeah. And they were okay then, I guess, uh, Cheryl? Uh, I don't know what the results were. I just remember okay. Doris saying that she contacted head office about it. And the okay, people good. that bought the and the people that bought the Presbyterian Church? Mm-hmm. Well, Besides, all around that rock, right? Yeah. Right. We don't you don't even no. know how far it goes in Massey. Oh not, you not don't necessarily know. all along the rock. I grew up along the rock and Alan Swartz tested it and it was within limits. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I'm all over. Okay. My parents' okay. host, Kevin. Yeah, okay. I've, anybody anybody got anything else? Yeah, I do. Go ahead, Darren. Okay. There's a gentleman approached me about some memorial banners like Espanola has. He said uh, he said he was out last um, Remembrance Day and Joe Hool uh, showed them something. He said he thought there was a counselor that said he didn't know who it was, but he said he thought there was a counselor who was going to bring this forward. He asked me to mention that tonight he's wondering if council's interested because he was going to attempt to start a little fundraiser and approach families of uh, lost veterans or, or deceased veterans to do the sort of the same thing as Espanola. I indicated to him as far as I knew, it's pretty expensive for Espanola Public Works or PUC to come and put anything on a post and it's like a installed in the spring and taken down in the fall. So what I told him was I would mention just what I've mentioned to you people and whether you want to give an answer now or take a consideration. I see Edie's got her hand up. Um, Amanda at the Economic Development Office is already on that and she's pricing out banners, hangers, installation costs okay. and adjustments. Yeah. Okay, and great. I'll discuss that at Economic Development. We had brought that before us before. So I'm happy to hear that the interest is still there. Yeah, and I did discuss that with Joe Hool at the Remembrance Day service. Uh, yeah. But I, I knew that Amanda was in, in the works of doing that. So okay. that's, that's um, a possibility, yeah. Last year, I asked about some of those uh, custom garbage cans. I asked if, to, if we could have three or four. And I believe at that meeting, I was told that we'd have to price it out and whatnot. I was of the opinion we could just get uh, Gary from our extra gang to... to uh, put an organize uh, a list of what he needs, get the, the steel and weld it together. But we need three or four more of those uh, custom garbage cans for our community. And I'd like to see us move on it now. So when summer's here, we can have them. We already ordered some for the park. Okay, well, whatever we talked about in last year, I was told that there'd have to be an estimate put together before we could proceed. We could, again, we could do this in house. 
I have no doubts in my mind at all. There's steel available locally. We got a man in our extra gang that could weld it all up, and it would be cheaper than contracting it out. But I'd like to see us get those cans. Next thing, well, I'll we got to watch the quality of the welding and whatnot. You're going to put that out in public. You don't want yeah, to. The you have to remember, here. there's liability and certification yeah. involved in anything yeah, yes, that we deal with with the township. Yeah, there could be a pat. There could be a patent on that design too. So. Okay. Well, so I guess we have already know. ordered. We already ordered some for the down in the mouse park. The same. Yeah, those are the bear. Down. The bear proof ones, Pat. Yes. Yeah. 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 We ordered that's, another one already. That's not what I'm talking about, Pat. I'm talking about the, the ones that are specially painted. I asked because we got a uh, galvanized can down by the stop sign uh, where um, uh, right, what's the name of the street? Meet A Street. The post office street needs gray. There's a galvanized can there. There's one over at that church. So there's two right now that I'd like to see the same yeah. cans as what we're using, the same receptacle. Anyways, I've mentioned it. I uh, this I mentioned it last year. And we went nowhere with it. I'm wondering about that hydro, that light that we talked about, where uh, River Road West meets Highway 17. It's, I would in, like it's in the budget. It's already been budgeted for. So, I mean, all mm. we have to do is go through the motions when the budget is passed. Okay, thank you. Um, I asked a couple meetings ago about the South Yard. Did we compare notes at all with NEMI to see how they went about uh, looking for a developer with their signage? Economic development is meeting next week and Amanda was putting something together for them. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, I know there's another thing I want to <laughs> put here. Um, one of the extra gang isn't getting any extra work or getting any work at all. So I've had a couple complaints forwarded to me on the, over the phone. And uh, this was discussed at a meeting. I, uh, I believe Kevin, uh, Kevin uh, reiterated what I had said. I'd like to see this shared or whatever, this person is feeling uh, a little bit upset uh, over the lack of- uh, We'll take a look at that, but that's all That's all part-time casual work. That doesn't have to concern council too much when it's not a, a department head. I mean, we will follow up with that and we will see what has transpired with regards to the correspondence between them. Okay, um, one other thing. I received two dozen phone calls on the weekend. I don't mind taking the calls, but maybe we should. And you know what? Half of the people said I went on the site it was very difficult to navigate that site. And I did not find an after hours number. So I guess I just want to put the thought in our heads. Maybe we can talk about it in the future. Maybe we should have something set up for a contact number. Again, it's not going to bother me one bit. I'm chair of public works, but people were feeling a little bit in a panic with their basements starting to flood on and on. I'd like to see us have a remedy. And I have one last thing. I received a call from a gentleman, uh, Across, from across the tracks up north of uh, north end of town. Uh, he had some trouble with our bylaw guy and the, the guy told him that his truck was too heavy to be parked in the driveway and he challenged the fellow and said, Google up a, Google up a Chevy uh, Silverado uh, half ton and that half ton from the factory is 6,700 to 7,300 pounds, which was over the 6,000 pound limit that the bylaw officer had informed him that his driveway was maximum to carry and also told him that his two trailers that he had across the road at, a, at another fellow's residence couldn't be parked there. So he's upset and he wants some answers. He called me. So there, I've just spilled it on to you guys. I don't know what to say. I don't know, I don't know exactly what's happened, but a 6,000 load barrier for a driveway makes no sense to me, number one. And if the fella, the neighbor his that allows him to park the trailers there, they're not gaudy looking. One uh, has a boat on it. The other one is a snowmobile. I, I don't understand why you can't park them. So these are little things that's egg on my face, I believe, or egg on our face, because we've got this guy representing him, representing us, I'm sorry, and approaching this fella. And again, I don't know where all this stems from or what the basis of it is. So there, I've mentioned it. And I know he wanted me to mention it. So there, I've done that. And I don't know what the resolve is, but perhaps our office can follow up on it with the bylaw officer. I've given enough information. He's definitely going to know who I'm talking about. That's it. Thanks, Les. Kim, can you follow up there, please, sir? Uh, let's get some feedback on that. Yep, yep. I I'm sure, I'm sure, it's, in the, the I'm sure it's, it's in the zoning bylaw or the parking bylaw because that's where he will find his it, his rules yeah. to, to so follow. This fellow up. wants to know where everybody's going to park their trucks if they can't park them in the driveway. Township yeah. office was made available for that reason. This was a pickup truck, Kim. 
Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> I thought you were still talking about the transport. No, your truck, uh, your truck's heavier than that because it's a three quarter ton. My truck's over that 6,000. Kevin's is over that. So like, where do we stop with this? Uh, well, just I'll follow up, Dale. I'm not sure Thanks. what. Uh, Thanks, Kim. Thank you very yeah. much. Sure thing. Anything else for anybody tonight, dear? I just do. Um, can we look at those pretty painted garbage cans just to see what they did cost to get two more? Because yeah, I, I mean, I don't think we're going to get what we had. I think that that was done in collaboration with the Massey Improvement Committee at the time, and then individuals did the painting on them. So, yes. um, you know, that particular one probably isn't going to be available, but I'm sure there's going to be styles that will be similar. Um, I know that we have uh, added to our um, receptacle supply by putting the ones on the posts that um, are very... Uh, very well received. They're always, you know, they always have to be emptied and uh, you don't have to worry about the snow. You don't have to worry. They can stay there all year because they're raised off the ground. So, um, but we'll take a look and see what, uh, I'll, we'll get them to uh, price out some of those metal ones. And I do like the idea of after hours calls for, um, I'm not one of the people that will call people after hours. I will just shop back the flood until Monday. <laughs> <laughs> which I did all weekend. I yeah. shot back to my flood yeah. and, and I, and I called during hours, but I could see maybe it causing like, I don't know, catastrophic events yeah. to other people that, yeah, perhaps like an after hours emergency call number for specific. Yeah. I received many calls. Um, well, my, um, it's, it's running into my basement. It's my basement. Well, I, you know, like how do how do and I deal with that? You know, like uh, get your shop back. Or, about me, by the way, yeah. that was I did not call Glenda, and I did not. <laughs> I no, just, no, no, but you know, it's something that I can't solve myself. And they yeah. were looking to me to solve it instead yeah. of yeah. And I'm going. I'm sorry. You know, like. Yeah. Well, there yeah. was a situation in town. There was there's a broken line, and Jacques had the guys go out and bank it, and just and uh, how, what's the word I'm trying to think of here? Uh, move the water flow. So he diverted the water flow. That's the word I was trying to think of. He diverted the water flow or, the, or the, his, him and his group did and solved that problem. So the basement yeah. receiving the water and by doing something with after hours line, there, there's a project for tomorrow morning in the daylight. That's all I want to get at. It's, it's yeah. as, again, I don't, anybody that wants to call me can call me. I'm yeah. representing the ratepayers and I have no problem. Jacques and I have a good rapport. There's no problem. I don't want to call him at one o'clock in the morning or anything like that. But maybe what about when I'm out of town? That's all. No problem. John and I would talk four times last weekend, Sunday alone. So again, we're all over it. One thing before we go while we're talking about water, um, where are we going with that whole drain situation at Mooney's? I know it's winter and we can't do anything now, but, but, you well, know. I thought Bobby May, you remedied it. No, 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 no. There's still issues there and, and there's questions about like the rest of the drain, like, I don't know. So we're that's gonna, our question for our engineer, get, John, I think. Yeah, we're gonna have to get- Is this still the Harrow drain you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. No. I thought it was already solved. No, no. No, it ain't. So, I mean, we've had no. nothing else come to our office about it. I, why well, they have contact? Well, it was sort of up in the air at the end there. It was up in the air and, I, I remember we got a letter from Mr. Mooney or something asking for uh, a return on his taxes because of lost. But, yeah, but we just dealt with that. And, this, and the but drainage. That's here nor and there, but yeah. the, the, the issue has not gone away. There's but still flooding there. So the I don't work know on that. We, I don't know where we go from here on it, you know? The work on the drain commenced after Mr. Mooney's request. After his letter, I, I realized that, but the solution was never solved. There's oh, still an issue the, there. I believe well, that's Bobby, up to John then. Bobby went and re, and lowered the culverts to be in line with where they were supposed to be. So, well, well we have an engineer, right? We're yeah, going to we hear more about it. That's all I I'm. Think, that's all I'm telling you. So, well, well, should like we invite John to a meeting then? Sounded like the problem was in Mr. Mooney's field. More than it was in their ditches. Sorry for interrupting you, Pat. I didn't mean to cut in on it. And it and it may be, but whatever. We need clarification. We'll need the drain superintendent to look it over and, and give council a report. 
Can we do that? Can we? Yeah, that's all I gotta say. Yeah. Well, not this time of year. He can't do anything. Oh no, we can't do we anything do. now. I'm just. So why uh, didn't he contact the office again? If there was still an issue. You mean our engineer, Cheryl? No, oh, no. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mooney. If there was still an issue, why didn't he contact the office so we were made aware that there was still an issue? I don't know. That's all I'm he saying. And then we could have got the superintendent. Had, so. Yeah. John Mooney did come, uh, did send uh, a letter in in regards to compensation, and you never heard yeah, back in was, regards to response. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking well, about. No. When there was still drainage issues, I'm talking. Why didn't he say there were still drainage issues? Because then the not, engineer. It's not on John Mooney's property. Well, then whose is it on, and why aren't they letting us know? Other than Kevin knows about it. It, it's from the culvert that we lowered there down to Laclanche Lake Road. Yeah. Well, it's our property. No, it ain't. It's all, it's all private property. It's run through the Martin farm there and the Morrell farm, all that there. It's flat ground there and the, the ditch has got to be lowered there to make that water run. So did, did Mr. Mayu not follow what our engineer asked of the, the contractor? He only did a, a certain portion there. But that he, he did complete what he was asked to do, what he was committed to do. That's right. That's okay. right. So then the questions have to go to our engineer. Engineer. Uh, right. Yeah. And I'm not surprised that Mr. Mooney didn't write us another letter to say it's not done because this has been ongoing for a while. I know the man's running out of patience with it. So I don't blame him for not telling us because we should know from our engineer what's going on. And obviously we don't. So. And that's why I brought it up. Thanks, Kevin. I'm glad you brought it up. I did not know that problem hadn't been solved. I thought it was over. Oh, I've been hearing mutterings about it all, all through the fall, late fall there. I went down that road many times in the fall and everything was good along the edge of the road. I didn't see any, I didn't see any pool like was there before. I wasn't aware of it. So good news. Good, or sorry, good, uh, good to know. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else for tonight? No, not for me. Okay. Be resolved the time is uh, eight twelve p.m. and this meeting be adjourned till the next regular meeting at the call of the chair. Can I have a mover and a seconder? <laughs> I'll move. Kevin will move it there. Seconder. Edie. Edie. Sorry about that. Edie, there never heard. Uh, Kevin for or against? I am in favor. Edith. In favor. Pat. In favor. Glenda. In favor. Cheryl. In favor. Dale. In favor. Motion carried.